Morning Drop. It's Tuesday. And as always, joining me today is Charlie Five to talk about what Hugh Freeze had to say at his Monday presser. Georgia is coming. Will the Tigers be ready? Let's drop it on them. You are you now, are now listening, listening to the War Report. Drop! Morning drop. You guys know the deal. It's Tuesday, and I'm here with my guy, Charlie Five, to talk a little bit about what Hugh Freeze had to say. Charlie, before we get started, share your pain with me from Saturday. <laughs> Auburn dropped another one. Shit, shit. Bring, bring it to the altar. Oh man, uh, I feel like I've had this therapy session multiple times. Now. I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting out on the other side. I'm trying. I'm now. I'm, I'm, I'm searching for the positives. No, but it was tough. It was. Uh, you felt like you were finally seeing a, a team sort of turn the corner and realize their potential, uh, playing really, really well on both sides of the ball uh, for three and at three quarters and a few minutes into the third quarter yeah. and fourth quarter, and then. Uh, you felt the momentum shift, and uh, it was something that y- they couldn't stop. And that's one thing you can you can increase your talent at different positions. You can make your position groups better. You can do things across the board to increase the talent. But you got to figure out when you're rebuilding a program, you got to find ways to win games. You got to find ways to close out games, and that's the next step: is figuring out how to take those guys and not just put up numbers, but come out with wins and and i think that's the next uh, step i I do feel like they're close and i don't think that's very i mean honestly don't even think that's very arguable uh but well you know you got it you it is what it is you're two and three and your back's against the wall and if you want to get see any type of postseason whatsoever you got to make it happen uh well hugh freeze echoes your sentiments that it's close uh he also feels like they're making progress uh in his opening statement he had this to say about the progress it's making ground. The process is. I see it. Um, the record doesn't reflect it. Um, even when playing, uh, let's see, 12 freshmen and uh, I think a combination of the 49 guys that played Saturday, there was 24, if you count our kicker, 24 freshmen and sophomores that um, that played the majority of the snaps. So he says that even though we're playing all these young guys, it's making progress. Um, I I agree with him that it is making progress. Uh, I don't think that most fans think the personnel is the issue, though. Uh, what are your thoughts here on this uh, on this part of his opening statement? Well, if you're if you're if you look at it through just a sour lens, I can see how you could you could take it and be like, okay, well, we we don't feel like it's so much a talent issue as it is just figuring out a way to win games. But the way I look right. at it is, uh, I'm not blaming it on the young guys. It's clearly not the young guys. It's there was we coached our way out of that game. I, I feel like that's in, a fair in statement a couple, in a couple of scenarios. But you basically carve up the uh, you basically carve up the best defense in the country. Um, you are playing lights out on defense, which they weren't a great offense, and, and I mm. understand that. But you you only you, you essentially gave up two plays that was almost half of their total offense. I mean, it was right. that that you're playing good on both sides of the ball, and you're doing it with a lot of young guys who, in theory, uh, if the situation's right and, and the NIL's right. Uh, and you can retain them like they're just going to be one year older and one year better. And if once you again, if you can get over that hump of figuring out how to win uh, and you got all these guys with all the experience, I mean, there is a lot of positives uh, that you can take away from it. And, and again, I'm not saying I don't want anybody to try to mis- misconstrue anything and saying mm-hmm. I think the reason we lost that game is because we're young. No, I think Hugh Freeze had a, uh, you know, had a. I don't know the, the right terminology, but he had a moment a lot like a, a Peyton Thorne does at times uh, where the moment got big. And, and I think as a coach, when you're rebuilding, you got to try to figure out ways to win too. And he said it, I got to figure out, I got to, when they play this good, I got to coach them into a win. Mm. Uh, and, and he didn't do that on Saturday. So, but, but again, I, I agree with him. You're, you're playing young guys and you're succeeding that that's good. That is really good for the future. Yeah, I had some questions about clock management, particularly at the end of the first half where there was the whole Mm -hmm. debacle. They threw a route short at the end zone, rushed the field goal team on, got a reprieve, 
kicker missed two kicks in a row there. It was it was painful to kind of watch. Maybe um, there should have been a different strategy there. I'm not sure what they were going for. Uh, but there were some other things that I was not sure about. Now, after the game, I asked him about the plays from the OU one, Charlie. And uh, in this press conference, he had – uh, he had a question about his biggest regrets, and here's what he had to say. Uh, you know, I'm very transparent. I've watched it like three times, and I usually stop at two. But um, uh, all right, let's 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 start at first half. He could have been 24 to seven at half. Um, we um, get down inside the. I mean, heck, I guess to the one or two. Had two shots from there and went with a package that we've been working for several weeks and um, truthfully regret um, not giving it to Jarquez. He regrets not giving it to Jarquez. I regret that he did not give it to Jarquez. <laughs> Do you regret that he did not give it to Jarquez? I'm a – look, I am an anti-Wildcat guy in general. <laughs> so so, uh, so even, you. even if it's Jarquez that gets the ball in the Wildcat, yeah, I'm not sure. a, okay, I'm not a right, Wildcat guy. But I will say this. I will say this. Oklahoma was – we did average a ton – Yard per, yards per carry against them. But I think a lot of the reason we were able to do that is because we were able to keep them off balance. But if yeah. there were yards that we had to get, they were very good at stopping it. They were very good at stopping some of the short uh, – you know, if you had to get some yards, that they, they were good at being able to stop it. So I can understand feeling like you may have to do something a little bit different uh, to be able to try to punch one in because I don't know that you felt confident that even with Jarquez you could line up and, and beat them because they, they on the one yard line because they are one of the best defenses in the country. So while I understand the the, the feeling that you need to do something different, I just wish it was not that. Yeah. <laughs> I wish it was not the Wildcat. Uh, and, and whether it was some kind of pass play or some different kind of misdirection run, quarterback uh, read. I mean, hey, I would have taken I would have taken a, you know, maybe give a RPO type play to Sam Jackson there. Like yeah. let him run the read option and let him be able to run it and throw out of it instead of just the wildcat, you know, power play. Um, even if you know, I know he said that they they had it blocked for a minute, uh, like they had it blocked perfectly for a second, and the gap just closed. Uh, whatever. Uh, I'm just not a wildcat guy. I, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm with just, you. I'm not a wildcat guy. I don't like putting Sam Jackson in there to run the ball. I think if you're gonna put him in in there, let him throw it, let him catch him off guard. Uh, but it felt like he kind of outcoached himself there. You sure. Know, the simplest thing was probably the right thing, but sticking with uh, the theme of play calling. Uh, there was a theme in this one about executing the RPO. Here's what he had to say about them executing the RPO. Yeah, that's a, that's a balancing act. Um, there were a lot of uh, runs where we did. Um, it was it was handoff all the way. Um, others, we still believe in giving the option because, I, I mean, you can't – this this league is – I mean, that team we played against don't give up many rushing yards. It just – you go look, and they are loaded with NFL guys. Those safeties and linebackers and ends are, are NFL dudes. And, um, I mean, there's one run play we have. With, it was automatic give, and that's the, that number two. Good God, he, he's one of the best I've seen in a long, long time. I mean, he makes the tackle on Jarquez for a one-yard gain, and he's lined up 14 yards deep. I mean, he's – He's pretty dang good. So, so there's yes, there's a balancing act. You can do that, um, but then everybody's going to yell and scream when you do that, and they have too many guys that you you can't you have nobody to block him. And so you've got to. I think it's a balancing act for sure. But we definitely want 27 to get his get his share of touches. But when you do throw the RPO, it's our job to make sure that it's thrown to the right RPO. And that's where we still are struggling a little bit. And so we got to keep working to get that corrected. Uh, working to get it correct, making the, the correct decisions in the RPO game. Uh, look, I felt like Payne Dorn played fairly well in this one. There's still some things to clean up. Sure. Uh, but what do you think about what he had to say here about executing the RPO? 
I, I mean, he said I, I had a show last week where we talked a lot about this with you know folks that know more about the RPO than me. But the walking up to the line and knowing you have answers uh, is, is key, especially when you're sort of undermanned on the offensive line and you're going up against a team like this. Like I, people say, why don't you just call called runs? It's like okay, we can you can do that. But like he just said. What if they? What if they walk everybody down in, in the gap that you're going to run through? Like you got, you got to go to the line, especially in this league, and, and as we're building this w- with options, with answers. So I get it. I get. I get the 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 idea that you can have different answers. The only difference is I think that in certain situations, in certain situations, it has to be a no brainer. You know what I mean? Like it has to be like a touchdown. To, to pull it, uh, to pull it and throw the pass. Uh, and said so there has to be a little bit more common sense versus just rules, if that makes sense. Like the rule is if I have this situation, I pull it and I throw it to him. Well, okay, nine times out of 10, you're probably right. But situationally, that, that play may be only, that play may not be the 100 percenter. You know what I mean? And, and now you're, in, now you're in a bind. Now the clock's not running. Uh, I think there situationally has to be, uh, more awareness uh, of when to pull it uh, and, and throw it and, and versus hand it, and I think that goes with coaching. Like you gotta, you yeah. gotta have, you know. I coach a coach pitch uh, baseball league, like, and, and we work on situations on when to, what base to throw it to, like in in all kind of situations. Like you gotta do that at that level, you know, that small level. Like you gotta do it in in, in this as well. Like it's gotta mm-hmm. be a little bit more of a no-brainer situation when you're late in the fourth quarter and you got to burn some clock before you pull it and throw the ball. Uh, and I think that's that may be what he's talking to. I don't have a problem with RP. I, I actually really like the, the offense the, the offense in general, and it seems to be working really well. You just got to, like you said, clean some things up. They're moving the ball. It's just the margin for error for this team is so small. It uh, feels like right now with the schedule and everything they got going on. But one thing they have going on uh, – Sticking with the theme of quarterback, I uh, asked a question here about what Peyton's performance meant in terms of the future of the, the, I'm sorry, the rest of the season at quarterback. Hank got two quarters versus an SEC opponent. He pulled them. I uh, felt like to me, Hank is is done. I don't see how they go back to him absent of injury. But uh, here's what Hugh Freeze had to say about what Peyton's performance meant for the rest of his time at Auburn. Uh, coach, outside of uh, the interception in the fourth quarter, Peyton had a very good day statistically. He was six or seven on passes of 20 yards or more down the field. Can you talk about um, the day he had, what he was seeing, and yeah. whether this performance cements in your mind uh, your decision to give him the job to start the season? Um, I couldn't be uh, – I told him after the game, man, I, I, I thought not just him, but I thought he laid it on the line for, for our kids, for our team, for our program. I mean, he, he was um, he sacrificed his body. He gave gave himself um, up many times to get us first downs. I thought he did a really nice job of. We have an an oh crap rule, and that means if if my progression is not there pretty quick, then man, let's let's put our foot in the ground and let's go that way and and put us in second and eight. We we can live with that. And I thought he. Uh, I thought he just he really really played solid. Obviously, he wishes that he has one throwback, and as as everybody does. But man, I thought he really laid it on the line for us and for our team. And um, it's it's kind of what we expect out of him at the start of the season, and and moving forward is is what we'll expect. Yeah, it's hard to say he's he's not the starter in these kind of games. I think he gives us our best chance to win. And as long as he keeps taking care of the football like he did. Take care of the football, and he gives us our best chance to win. That's what I heard there. Look, uh, I think that how Hugh Freeze felt about Peyton Thorne preseason prevails here. He felt like better pieces around him would make a better, better Peyton Thorne. On Saturday, we got a glimpse of good Peyton Thorne, right? And I, the, the one interception to me does not define his entire game. You know, what do you think about Peyton Thorne's performance? And, you know, has he earned the right to be Auburn's starting quarterback the rest of the season? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know that I can point to anything there that Hugh said that I disagree with. Um, I, I felt like he played a masterful game, like ag- under the circumstances against the opponent that, you know, people say, oh, he just only 
goes off against non P5 teams or, or whatever. Uh, and he carved up one of the best defenses in the country. I mean, absolutely surgical uh, mm. for a whole game. And, and like you said, he put his body on the line. Like he was pounding for first downs. I love the oh crap rule. I think I need to add an oh crap rule for several situations uh, in my daily life. But uh, yeah, like uh, I, I like that. And, and I thought he was, he played good. And like he said, he and, and one thing he said on the post game press conference that he didn't say here when he was talking about that play is, I can't put him in that position. You know, Correct. I got to yeah. coach him better. I got to coach better and not put him in the position to where something like that could ruin that game. You know what I mean? Yeah. It can ruin the game uh, that he's having. And I, 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 I said it uh, after the, the Arkansas game and, and just seeing uh, I, I love Hank and I think Hank is going to be a great player for Auburn or someone uh, very, very soon. Uh, but and, and I hope it's at Auburn. Uh, but I think right now with this team, Peyton just gives you the best chance to win, and it's going to be good Peyton, and there's going to be some bad Peyton, uh, and you just got to hope that you can coach that good Peyton out more so than not and, and get results like you saw on Saturday and give yourself a chance to win some tough games. Yeah, I, I agree with you, and I can tell you I did not agree with people beating up Peyton after the game as if he was the reason they lost. Look, if if, if Towns hits two field goals, you're not – talking about Peyton's performance in that light. You're just yep. not, right? And maybe he's not, you know, there's a causality to that. Maybe he's not even in that position or the play calling is different. But you lost that game before that interception in my book, and, uh, you know, I'll die on that hill. Look, Georgia's coming, or we're going to Georgia. Uh, as we do this weekly, <laughs> give me a prediction, give me a score and, and a why. Uh, I do think it's I, I do think it's going to be a little bit closer uh, yeah. than – you know, at least the odds makers think. I think it'd be a or very, very tall. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it'd be a very tall task for Auburn to go in there uh, and win. Uh, after watching the first half of the Alabama game, I was like, man, this team is beatable. I think Auburn can – I think this Georgia team is beatable. And then uh, I, they turned it on offensively in the second half. And I think if they're able to play the defense at the level that they can play it at and and be able to throw the ball down the field – it's not a very good matchup for for Auburn. I, I just don't think it's a very good matchup at all because they're going to have a very good offensive line. They're going to be able to negate our pass rush, and then can our defensive backfield hold up? Uh, Alabama's couldn't, uh, and they almost gave the game away because of it. So uh, it's it's not a great matchup, but I think you know I, I do I still think this team sort of has a, a little bit of fire in them, and hopefully they can you know be inspired enough to go in there and see what you know. Lock the doors, get in a fight, and see what happens. Uh, yeah. You know, you know what I mean. I, I want to see that kind of mentality come out. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting uh, to see where they land here. Uh, I don't think anybody really expects a win, but if you can do some things, you haven't fared very well in Athens. Uh, you haven't won there since two thousand five. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, and and what scares me for Auburn in this one is you may be facing a pissed off Georgia team that feels like they should have pulled off the upset. <laughs> Yeah, against Alabama this past the weekend. Uh, Charlie, before we get out of here, man, tell people where they can find you. Absolutely. Uh, call, log on to the barnalmer.com. One dollar, the best investment you can ever make for your first month. If you love it, great. If you don't love it, you're only out of buck. Check out all of the information and, and different things that we can, uh, that we provide uh, team insight, recruiting insight, a lot of fun, a lot of good conversation, and a great community. Uh, to join. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. Check us out the barnauburn.com. Follow me on Twitter, the underscore Charlie underscore five. And then you, you got me at the top button podcast every single day. Appreciate that. Always a pleasure, my friend. Guys, this episode of the Morning Drop is brought to you by our friends at Manscaped. Visit manscaped.com and use code reporter to get 20% off plus free shipping. Uh, Manscaped is there when uh, when you need to when you need to clean up a little bit. <laughs> uh, try really hard not to be vulgar here. Uh, we appreciate them for sponsoring the show. Uh, their Beard and Balls Bundle uh, that features those. Lawnmower 5.0 and, and the Beard Hedger. Uh, so one trimmer for your face and one for your sack. Oh, you yeah. You don't have to combine the two anymore, Charlie. You separate those things like a civilized human being. That's it for today's Morning Trot. We'll be back at you guys tomorrow with more morning drop talking about developments this week in the lead up to georgia guys we're signing off and as always war eagle
Roger.